were doing carbon and its compound, right? And we had uh, we were doing the type of bond that carbon makes. We had just started with covalent bonding or covalent bond. So everyone has seen what is covalent bond. Covalent bond is the bond formed by the sharing of electron. Bond formed by sharing of electrons. So whenever two elements, they are sharing their electrons, that means an electron belongs to both the element, uh, both the atoms. So such a bond, such a force of attraction which exists between them is a covalent bond. For example, yesterday we saw the covalent bond in case of ammonia. Okay, Ammonia forms uh, the bond by the sharing of electrons. We also, we will see today the bond formation in CH4, that's methane. See, uh, so to show the structure, to show the structure, we represent the electrons in the outermost shell only. We represent the electrons in the outermost shell with a dot. Each electron is represented with dot a dot. Cross yeah? Dot or cross cell for different atoms. Dot or cross. So uh, that is why this structure is also called as electron dot structure. So here if we find that carbon is the central atom and around carbon, every carbon has six electrons. So we mark the electrons of carbon. Let's say we take the electron of carbon over here. So these are the electrons of carbon which are present. We are making them on four sides. Okay. Now you have four hydrogen. And each hydrogen requires one electron. So there will be a hydrogen atom. It will be able to share one of its electrons. So hydrogen atom will share its own electron. Here also there will be a hydrogen. And each hydrogen can share at most one electron. So you have hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Each hydrogen will share one electron. Now, the, if it shares one electron, so it will gain also one electron. So, whatever electron that hydrogen is able to share, that will be same equal to the electron that is obtaining from carbon. Okay. So, in this way, if you see each hydrogen, So let's see how we can represent. This is just a representation. Okay. So see this hydrogen. Now it can have two electrons. So this is how this hydrogen will look like. In the similar way, you will have this one hydrogen. Similar way, you can have this with two electrons. The other one also having two electrons. The central carbon, it will have all the, since the central carbon is sharing four electrons, so it will have all the four electrons. So the central carbon, it is having a total of eight electrons. Four electrons it is sharing and four electrons which are being shared by the hydrogen. Hence, the valency of carbon in the central state it is satisfied okay so carbon now has eight electrons in its outermost shell so it is satisfied hydrogen has two electrons in its outermost shell so therefore this is also satisfied okay Srilasya, is there any issue uh, you are unable to turn on your camera sir i'll turn on in a minute okay Okay, Subha Charvik, Hasnita. 
I should not be able to uh, tell you uh, from next time. I will just inform in the group. Either you should turn it on. And if you are having facing any issue, just inform in the group. Okay. So uh, this is what we have drawn as electron dot structure. In the similar way, we can represent this with the help of a bond. Then it will be called as a bond structure. For example, I can write the same thing as like this carbon. It is bonded to hydrogen. This is bonded to hydrogen. Here this is a bond with hydrogen. Here, and here we have a bond with hydrogen. Each bond is formed by two electrons. Okay. So you can understand it this way that every bond is formed with the help of two electrons. Okay. So a bond means two electrons. So one from carbon and one from hydrogen. <laughs> now let's try to form uh, some other uh, electron dot structures. Can you make the electron dot structure of carbon dioxide? Try to make the electron dot structure of carbon dioxide. Okay, anyone who has made for carbon dioxide? Done. Done. Okay, so whoever has done, just show it. I'll be checking each one. So who all has made? I'm just, okay. I'm just, wait a minute. I'm making it. Okay, okay fine. Uh, this is correct. Electron dot structure of CO2. Uh, try to make the electron dot structure of uh, MgCl2 or H2O. Make the electron dot structure for H2O. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone else who has completed? Vedika? Okay, just wait. Uh, Okay, this is for, no, there is something, just I'll show it once more. Uh, no, you are, uh, carbon is sharing two electrons with ox each oxygen. And you have shown that carbon is sharing just one electron with each oxygen. Okay, Vedika, so when I, when I solve it, just so pay I'm attention over there. Yeah? I show you. Okay, sir, you. Okay, okay, yes. Yeah, this one is correct. And also draw the bond structure. Sir, I just draw, uh, draw the bond structure also. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, my heck. Okay. Also draw the bond structure for it. Mac also draw the bond structure. So does bond structure mean like this? Yeah, like this. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Kesuba Charvik and Tanishka. Sir, I've kept you. Yes, sir. So I'll, I'll turn my camera on in five minutes. I just had a power cut. So what next element did you give us? Okay. Uh, which, uh, which thing? Mahek? Yes, sir. 
You gave another name, sir. Magnesium. Uh, magnesium. Okay, this one is incorrect. There are two bonds. See, uh, the carbon is sharing two electrons. Okay, so there will be two bonds between carbon and oxygen. Where, whereas you have made just one bond, Tanishka. Okay, sir. So in the um below one in the bonds. Yeah, in the bond structure, there should be two bonds with okay. each oxygen. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Got it. And uh, I, I told you magnesium chloride and H two O. H two O and magnesium. Yeah, H2O, okay, you made H two O, Shravani. Okay, I see so. This is H two O. Okay, yeah, it's correct. And Monish, you have not shown. Yes, I want to. Uh, so last year, just show. Uh, uh, have you been able to do? Okay. Uh, so, unmute. Yes. Uh, okay, it's correct. Correct. Is this right for H two? Okay, just uh, Hasnita wait. Hasnita. H two O. No, you are not showing which electrons are being shared from oxygen. Now, this is incorrect. Asnita, this one is incorrect. Oh, okay, uh, we'll just do it. Monish, okay, Monish. Uh, uh, Monish, just one minute. Show it once more. Okay, how many electrons have you drawn around oxygen? Just check how many electrons are there around oxygen. Sir, eight. Eight. But how many electrons are there in a uh, valence shell of oxygen? There are six only. Yes, sir. So you should draw six, not eight. Yes, sir. So it's incorrect. Redraw it. Okay. Once can you check mine for H2? Okay, H2. Yeah, it's correct. It's correct for H2. Uh, so last time, uh, did you show your carbon dioxide? Okay, you showed your carbon dioxide. Okay, every, I think almost everyone has shown for carbon dioxide. So let's move further. Okay, see, it's very simple to make. First of all, identify the central element. Here the central element is carbon and carbon has four electrons. So there will be four electrons which carbon will share. And there is there are two oxygen. So make two oxygen. Oxygen has six electrons in their outermost shell. So oxygen will be able to share only two electrons. It requires two electrons. So it will be able to share only two electrons. It cannot share more than two electrons. Okay. So it should be like this. Oxygen has six electrons. We have made six electrons. Uh, near oxygen. Carbon has four, so we have made carbon four, uh, we will be making four electrons around carbon and we can make it anywhere uh, uh, as, as per our each. Like we can make these two over here and the other two over here as it suits. Okay. So here one electron of oxygen will be shared with the carbon and another electron will be shared so hence the oxygen now satisfies its valency of 8. You can count here 2, 2 over here, 2 over here, 2 over here, 6 and 2 of the carbon which it is sharing. So there are 8 electrons with oxygen. Now its octet is complete. Yeah, Monish? Monish? Yes, sir. Did you get it? Yes, sir. I got it. Okay. For oxygen? And similarly, here also, up to now, the valency of carbon is not satisfied. You can see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So, it will share another two electrons with oxygen. And hence, now the valency of carbon is satisfied. 
and the valency of oxygen is also satisfied. Okay. So let's try some other one. Uh, let's do. Okay, uh, how can we draw for MgCl2? So your magnesium, it has two electrons in the outermost shell. Chlorine has seven electrons. Okay. So we mark seven electrons of chlorine. And how many electrons are required by chlorine then? Just two. Yeah? One electron. One electron. One so electron. One and uh, so therefore there is another chlorine. Okay, so this also has seven electrons and it requires just one. Okay, so here we will show the transfer of electron. The electrons are not shared now. They are transferred. So we show the transfer of electron like this. So yeah. one electron is transferred to this chlorine. One electron is transferred to this chlorine. Okay, so now your chlorine has uh, one negative charge. Since it got one electron, so it has one negative charge. This magnesium, it gave two electrons, so it has two positive charge. And chlorine, it has given one electron, so it has one negative charge. Sir? Okay, yes? Sir, uh, before there was a shortage of, uh, there is a short circuit mm -hmm. just two minutes ago so i was unable to show and write, write them but i have done it right now can i show it okay so just uh, show it uh, just hold on hold on for a minute this is H2O, right? Okay, it's correct. It's correct, sir. Okay, so in this way, you will have a formation of MgCl2. You can also write it like this, MgCl2. Okay, so two chlorine atoms, they are linked with one magnesium. Okay, uh, let's try to write for C2, C2H6. Okay. But for this, I do not want the electron dot structure. Rather, I want here you to make bond structure only. You should make bond structure. Sir? Yeah, make Sir, the could you repeat the question? Make the bond structure of C2H6. Sir, is this one? Wait, wait a minute. So, this. Okay. Sir, C2H6. Uh, just wait. C2H6. Yes, this is correct. Yes. Uh, Srilasya, or is there anyone who has completed? Srilasya, have you completed the bond yes, structure? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, show it. If you complete, just show it. Sorry, just now, sir. Yeah. Yeah? Yes, uh, Srilasya, show. Srilasya, show it. Okay, it's correct, Srilasya. Okay, C4H6, right. So everyone is now able to make the electron uh, dot structure and the bond structure, right? I'm looking for a few more questions that we can do and then we'll move further.
just wait. I'm sharing the screen. Saryo, Dhruv, Dhruv, Dhruv. Yes, sir. Please uh, turn on the cameras. Yeah, sir. One second. Okay, can you show the formation of H2? Formation of H2 and N2. H2 and N2. Asnita, have you made? Yeah, Asnita, have you made? Correct, correct. Uh, who is showing? Sir, Tanishka. Look at Tanishka. Okay, this is H2, right. Right, Tanishka, H2. Show the formation of N2 also. N2. Yes, sir. I'll draw it right now. Okay. Quickly, if you are if you have done it, just show it quickly so that we can move to the next one. Dancer, both has to an end. Okay. Yes. Sir, you ready? Sir, is this right and for you? Sir, I have sent you the message. Okay. No, N2, is the, is the valency satisfied? How many electrons are there in nitrogen? Is it seven or five? Nitrogen has five electrons in the outermost oh, cell. Sorry, sir. I'm going to get it. Okay. So make it again. Sir, can I show? Sir, I've sent you a message. Not me. Uh, send in the group. Sir, can I show? Where are you? Sir, can I show, sir? Yeah. Uh, Srilasya and... H2 is correct, Shreyasi. And Srilasya, just wait. Uh, N2. Okay, it's correct. Also show the bond. Anyone else who is showing? Sravani. Okay. Okay, this is correct. N2. Right. Okay, so most of you have got it correct. Let's move to the next topic. Um, share C. Okay, it's correct. So most of you have got it correct. Let move. Let's move to the next one. To see. Uh, you have drawn the bond structure of C two H six also which includes two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms. Okay. So, there is one, comp one thing that you should remember. How many bonds carbon can make? Yes. How many bonds a ca carbon can make? Four bonds. Four bonds. Okay. Carbon will make four bonds only, which will satisfy its valence. Hydrogen will make only one bond and oxygen will make two bonds. Right? So, oxygen will make two bonds, hydrogen will make one bond and carbon will make four bonds. If there is nitrogen, so nitrogen will be making three bonds. This we have seen. <coughs> okay. So, hydrogen, carbon and nitrogen. Now, we see the two allotropes and then we will move to the nomenclature. 
allotropes. The two allotropes of carbon, they are graphite and diamond. Allotropes are graphite and diamond. Sir, Buckminster Fuller? That's artificially prepared. Okay, these two are natural. You also have Buckminster full range, but they are artificial ones. Yes, sir. But that was also mentioned in textbooks. Yeah, that is also an allotrope of carbon only. Graphite and diamond, both of them, they are made up of carbon. Carbon. So what are the differences that bring about their difference in properties? If you see graphite, so in the case of graphite, there are each carbon atom is linked to just three other carbon atoms. It's not linked to four other carbon atoms, giving rise to hexagonal plate-like structure. Okay. So it's something like this, that carbon atoms, they are arranged in the form of hexagonal plates. Sir, they are so layered in, upon each other, right, sir? Yeah, this is just one layer. What I have drawn is just one layer. And at each corner, you have a, a carbon atom. So as you can see, each carbon is linked to maximum of three, uh, three carbon atoms. Okay. If you identify this carbon, it is linked to just three carbon atoms, one, two, and three. So this carbon atom, it is also linked to three other carbon atoms only. So in this way, hexagonal plate-like structures are formed. Okay. So this is one plate. In the similar way, there is another plate. Okay. So this is one plate. Oh, above it, there will be another plate, which will be linked to it. So it will be something like this. They are arranged in the form of hexagonal plates. So it should be something like this. Uh, so like this. So in this way, the atoms, they are arranged in the form of layer by layer. And between the two layers, whatever electrons are there, which are between the layers. So between the layers, there is a very weak bond. And hence the electrons are almost free. Okay. So in this way, the valency of carbon is satisfied also. But due to free electrons, it is a good conductor of electricity. It is a good conductor of electricity as there are free electrons. Since carbon can have four bonds, but here we see the presence of only three bonds. Okay. There are just three bonds. And hence, carbon is a, this graphite is a good conductor of electricity. But if you see the diamond, in case of diamond, each carbon is linked to four other carbon atoms in the form of tetrahedral shape, like this. So you have three carbon atoms. So they will be linked to another. So you can see here that each carbon is linked to four other carbon atoms. Giving rise to rigid three-dimensional structures. So you can identify this carbon is linked to four carbon atoms. One, two, three, four. So every carbon over here, it is linked to four other carbon atoms. This is the structure of diamond. And hence, no electrons are free in diamond. So therefore, diamond cannot conduct electricity, whereas graphite can. Okay. <clears throat> now let's move on to a small topic that is nomenclature of organic compounds. Along with it, we also have saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. So what are hydrocarbons? Hydrogen and carbon bonds. Okay. If an element, if a compound contains only hydrogen and carbon, Compounds of only hydrogen and carb carbon, they are called as hydrocarbons. There should not be anything else. 
So then we call them as saturated and uh, then we call them as hydrocarbons. Okay. So first we see what are hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons, they are compounds of compounds of carbon and hydrogen. Hydrocarbons are the compounds of carbon and hydrogen only. There is no other element. So such compounds, we call them as hydrocarbons. For example, C4H10, C2H6, C2H2. Okay. All these are hydrocarbons. Okay. Now, there is a family of these hydrocarbons so there are three families of hydrocarbons. Out of the three families, we call them as alkenes. So these are the three families, alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes. So what are alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes? They are the families of hydrocarbons. We call them as family of hydrocarbons. So how many families are there? Three families. Three families. Three. So, uh, why we call them as family? As they have something common in them. Okay. In the case of alkenes, you will find only only single bond between carbon and carbon. You will find only single bond between carbon and carbon. Okay. Here will be at here will be one double bond. There will be one double bond between carbon and carbon. And here uh, there will be three, there will be a triple bond. There will be a triple bond between carbon and carbon. A triple bond between carbon and carbon. So if we will call that as alkyne. If there is single bond between carbon and carbon only, so we call them as alkenes. For example, if you make the structure of C4H10, okay, so in the structure of C4H10, there are four carbon atoms. Okay. The remaining bonds of these carbon atoms, they are attached with hydrogen. And if you count, so you have C4H10. There are just all the single bonds between carbon and carbon. This is C4H10 and it is an alkane. If you see C2H4, so C2H4, you have two carbon atoms and four hydrogen atoms. So there should be a double bond between carbon and carbon, like this. And if, if you check, so each carbon is having eight uh, four, uh, four bonds. This first carbon, it has four bonds, one, two, three, and four. Second carbon, it also has four bonds, one, two, three, and four. So we studied that every carbon can have at the most two bonds. So at the most four bonds. Okay. So, this is the structure of C2H4. This is an alkene. It has the presence of a double bond. Okay. Hasnita? Hasnita? Yeah, Hasnita? So, did you call me? Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. So, where are you busy? It seems you are playing music. Hasnita? Okay. 
So if you see alkynes, so alkynes, they have the presence of triple bond between carbon and carbon. It will be something like this C, triple bond with another carbon, and then single bondedly, it will be joined with hydrogen. So these are alkynes and there can be a maximum of three bonds between carbon and carbon. There cannot be four bonds between carbon and carbon. It cannot happen as the orientation will not support it. Okay. So they will not get oriented. That is why there will be a maximum of just three bonds between carbon and carbon. If you observe three bonds between carbon and carbon, this will be an alkyne. Okay. And its formula will be, so Saryu, what will be the formula of this? Last one. Saryu, what will be the formula of last one? Sir, is it C2H2? It's the C2H2. Now see what we write here, C2H2, we write here C2H4, okay, we write here C4H10, they are the condensed molecular formula. Condensed molecular formula. Okay. What we have drawn over here, this is called as a bond structure or this is called as a structural formula. So this is structural formula. This one is the structural formula of H4. This one is the structural formula of C2H2. So all these, they are the structural formula. What we have written over here is condensed molecules. Okay. There, that means there is some other molecular formula also. Like if I want to write this, uh, this one where we have written C4H10, I can write it something like this also, C. I will write this complete group as CH3. Then I will write as CH2. Then I will write again as CH2. And then I will write CH3. So this is also the same thing. Okay. This is also the molecular formula. This is also the molecular formula, but this one is the structural formula. This one is the condensed molecular formula. Sir, are we allowed to write like that uh, in exams? Yeah. Uh, which way? Yeah, you can. Even you can write it like this also. You can write it as CH3, CH2 whole twice, and CH3. You can write it this way also. Yes, sir. Because I was informed from somewhere, sir, that we are not supposed to write like that. I don't know. Sir. No, no. You can write it. Okay. These are the molecular formulas. And these are the structural formulas. So every time, we cannot keep on drawing on the structural formula. When it is required, we will draw the structural. Even in the book, you will write the, you will see the formula like this. Uh, let me show you. In the book also, you will see the formulas written like this. Sir, I have a doubt. Yes. Can one structural formula, can one molecular formula have two structural, two structural way of writing? Yes, a, mole, a molecular formula can have two or more than two structural formulas. Okay. And can they be the same or do they like, are they different? They will be different then. They will be different compounds. Okay. They will have their different properties. <laughs> okay. Sir, but if they are like the, if the, gen, like, sorry, if the molecular formula is same, sir, but if we have different, different um, compounds, so we still say the, that the compounds are same, right, sir? No, we don't say compounds are same, but we call them as isomers. Rather, we call them as structural isomers. All right, so yes. If the molecular formula is same, but the structural formula is different, we call them as isomers. Okay. So understood this? 
Yes. Now something more about alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. If you observe an alkane, if you observe an alkene and an alkyne. So alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Alkanes have the general formula of Cn H two N plus two. Alkenes have the general formula Cn H two N and alkynes have the general formula. Cn H two N minus two. Sir, N is the number of carbon atoms, right, sir? Yeah, N is the number of carbon atoms. N is the number of carbon atoms. So, if N is equal to three, can you write all all the alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes? What will be their formula? So can you repeat the question? Yeah. If n is equal to 3, then what will be the formula of alkane corresponding C3 alkane? H8. Yeah? C, uh, C3H8. H8. Okay. Alkane will be C3H8. C3H6. 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 This will be C3H4. H4. Okay. So in this way, if uh, by knowing the number of carbon atoms, we can predict the formula. Or if we know the formula, we can check out. Like if you want to check for this, C six H twelve. Okay. So what is this? Is this an alkane, alkene, or alkyne? Alkene. This is following the general formula C N H two N. Okay. Yes. So this is an alkene. Now, uh, for today's, we have this last topic, saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. Okay, so what do we mean if we say that something is saturated? Sir, not according to this, sir, but can we say it is like pure and unpure, sir? Uh, no, not pure and unpure. Saturated means uh, something where there is no space. All the spaces are fulfilled. We call them as saturated ones. Okay, like we have seen the saturated solution. So what is a saturated solution? Hasnita. Hasnita. Asnita, Saryu. Yes, sir. Yeah, Shreshi, what happened? No, sir. I, I was just telling if I could answer, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, just wait, I need to check. Okay. So, saturated hydrocarbons are the hydrocarbons where there is no spacing. Saturated means there is no extra space. Right? So, the saturated hydrocarbons, that means there is always single bond. You cannot add something to it. Okay. No, nothing extra can be added to it. Uh, last time, let me turn on your camera. So see, for example, if you uh, take this example of C4H10, and let us take another example of C4H8. Okay. And let's make the structures. So C4H10, 
it will be with four carbon atoms all joined with the single bond. There will be hydrogen atoms linked to each carbon. So its the formula will be like this. This is the structural formula. This is the structural formula of uh, C4H10. In the similar way, we can make C4H8. Okay, suppose I want to add something to these carbon atoms, uh, to these molecules. Let us say I want to add uh, some more hydrogen to this. I want to add some hydrogen or chlorine to this. Let us say here also I want to add something, chlorine or hydrogen. Okay, so do you think that this chlorine can be added directly to this or anything if we want? So is there any space? Is there any bond which is empty? No, sir. No. If you want to add chlorine or any other substance, so of course something from this molecule should leave. Okay. Either hydrogen should leave from this uh, or anything should leave from this group, then only chlorine will get added. Right. So we can assume that there is no space for any atom or any molecule to enter in this. Okay. There will be just elimination of an atom and then only the reaction will continue. But here, if you suppose I want to add chlorine over here, okay, so there is a place where I can add chlorine without elimination of the any substance. I don't need to eliminate hydrogen. We, we will be able to add chlorine over here. So how can we add? If this carbon at the first position, it has two bonds with this carbon, if the bond breaks, okay, another thing, uh, uh, do you think that this structure is correct? For C4H8, check down, uh, check everyone, if this C4H8 structure is correct. No, sir. So, there are nine hydrogens. Yeah, there yeah. are nine hydrogens. So, I should remove this. And this carbon is having the five bonds. Now it's correct? Yes, it is correct. Yes. Okay. So, if I want to add this chlorine, so nothing will leave out of it. Rather, one of the bond, this bond will break. Okay. This bond will break and therefore there will be free electron over here and another free electron over here and hence chlorine can be added up easily to this. So this is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. Unsaturated means you can add something to it. Okay. Monish? Yes, sir. Uh, what are unsaturated hydrocarbons? Sir, unsaturated hydro hydrocarbons are alkynes and alkynes. Yeah? Sir, alkenes and alkynes. Alkenes and alkynes. Why do we call them as unsaturated? So they have double and triple bonds. Yeah, they have double and triple bonds. So we call them as unsaturated hydrocarbons. Right? So alkenes and alkynes, they have double bond and triple bonds. And hence we call them as unsaturated hydrocarbons. Okay. So uh, it's if you want... Mm -hmm. Let's say C2H2. So is this C2H2 saturated or unsaturated? Unsaturated. Sir. Unsaturated. So if I draw the structure, it will be something like this. This is the structure of C2H2. Yes, sir. Okay. And if I want to add hydrogen to it. So by adding hydrogen, first it will get converted to alkene and then it will get converted to alkene. Okay. So I can add hydrogen to it and hence I can convert it. This was unsaturated. 
This was an alkene, and I can convert this alkene to alkanes by adding hydrogen. So this will become. Sir, it is an alkyne, no, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's alkyne. It will get converted to L uh, alkane. So it will be C two H six. And this happens in the presence of platinum as catalyst. Sorry. Nickel or palladium as catalyst, not platinum. You take nickel or palladium as catalyst. And it is heated in presence of hydrogen, nickel and palladium. So you will obtain C2H4. And such a specific reaction is called as a hydrogenation reaction. So this is your hydrogenation reaction. Means addition of hydrogen to an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So what is so PD again? Yeah. So what is PD again? Palladium. Okay, Nickel sir. and palladium as catalyst. So we also call it as an uh, addition reaction as well. Yeah, addition reaction also. So in your next class, we will continue with the hydrogenation reaction. Yes, sir. Okay, bye everyone. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir.